Welcome to Health Oddity, the show that strips away the jargon and hype surrounding all things health and fitness to help you live a long, strong and energetic life. Lining up at the bar this week, here's Peter Lant, Paul Bassett and James St. Pierre. Hello and welcome to Health Oddity, episode 110. Um, yeah, we're ticking out, ticking. We're going to get to 200 before we know it, aren't we, Peter? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. There we go. I was that trying was to decisive. figure it out. That'll be another year and a bit, but uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I mean, we had obviously the strength connection podcast on and, um, he did about a hundred in what, in six months. They did. Yeah. He said they did 170 episodes in six months. They were doing like it's one crazy. a day. It was ridiculous. Yeah. I, I think, I think, I think, well, firstly, I don't think anyone would want to be in contact with me that often. And secondly, <laughs> I think I'd run out of, I'd, I'd run out of thoughts. I think. I think there's only limited amount of thoughts, you know. Yeah, but you can have the same one over and over again. It's, okay, that's right. Okay. There's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. We all yeah. do that all the time. There are no new thoughts, are there? There are no new <laughs> so, thoughts. Right, you know. there we go. Oh, just to it? let was you it? know, just to let you know, by the way, Paul, and I didn't let you know this before we started recording, and you haven't made any silly faces yet or anything, I've changed the way we record this so you can see everybody. Because you can usually just right. see the person who's talking. And I, I I couldn't work out how to change that, so I just googled it. and It took me about three seconds. <laughs> so, is it, so, is it, is it, so is this a trigger warning for people? Um, basically, don't just don't, don't. You know, you usually like have a bit of a kip, and, and yeah. all that. Don't don't do that. Yeah, if my eyes start glazing <laughs> over, yeah, and I just zone out into my happy place. Yeah, exactly. Um, don't don't yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> anyway, so uh, but you're well, are you, Peter? Are you I am. Good? Thank you. Thanks yeah. for asking. Yeah, yeah. That's How are right. you? Yeah, like, yeah, not bad. Well, James isn't here, so so it's me and Peter. I'm fine. I'm um, I'm in my studio at the moment and raring to go because I'm pretty pretty excited uh, to to, ha to have our guest on today. And our guest is Ryan Hurst from GMB Gold Medal Bodies. Wow, I'm I'm excited to speak to Ryan because he's played a pivotal role in my own education as a as a trainer, having um, invested in many of their programs in the past and. Uh, I just thought they they had such an interesting system um, that was so easy to access, but also gave you real challenges where you wanted them to and gave you a path to success, which I'm sure Ryan will get into. But uh, Ryan's here from Osaka in Japan, and he's kindly given his time today. Um, so how are you, Ryan? Well, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, things are great. Um, love the banter between the two of you. That's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We yeah, as we you. said, it does. You know, it does. It varies in quality, but uh, today I think I think we nailed it, didn't we, Peter? That was that was what is known in the trade as top banter. Top banter, <laughs> have you know. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I think uh, again, it, maybe it's just the lack of James within the conversation. I don't want to break it to him again. Uh, yeah, he's always really well, successful when he's not on the podcast, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. No, no, no. no. <laughs> uh, I've got to tease him when he's not here. Um, so. Um, Ryan, um, how are you doing? How's things in Osaka? And um, well, how's life treating you at the moment? <laughs> yeah, I can't complain. Uh, things are really good here in Japan. They actually just opened up the borders again for people to come and travel in Japan. That, well, I should say they're opening the borders. That will happen October 11th, which is kind of cool. Um, it's been pretty quiet um because japan has still been closed off for what you know two two and a half almost three years now and uh in some parts it's been fabulous because we can travel and there's no tourists so that's actually been wonderful um yeah other than that things are great you know um, so, so that mean you've not been yeah. to the states since the beginning of uh, do you ever travel I have not. To pro? I, I, mean, I have not i have not left the country since actually january of 2020 so wow. um yeah it's been a while it's been a while i suppose it gives you a chance to really observe uh, and be part of japanese culture in a way that you know when you're when there's so many tourists around it's just a different world isn't it i don't i don't know where you live and whether it's very touristy but it, yeah um, you kind of see the culture for what it is you know yeah so i've been in japan for almost 30 years now though so oh, 30 um, almost 30 years yeah wow. okay. yeah so i went to uni i went to uni over here and so um i was over here um, studying martial arts in university uh, lived with my martial arts instructor 
And I actually worked at a martial arts complex within a Japanese shrine for eight years. So I've had quite a bit of Japanese culture over the years, to be honest. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you ever pick up the accent? You know, uh, it's like I've got I, a I do speak. Uses- yeah. So my accent currently um, in Japanese is the local Osaka dialect. There's actually this area uh, throughout. You have Osaka, you have Nara, you have Kyoto, and you have Wakayama and Kobe. And this is actually called the uh, Kinki uh, area. Um, and so there's multiple dialects of that, which is pretty interesting. So my dialect that I speak is mainly in this part, the northern part of Osaka. But because I was an interpreter uh, at the shrine that I worked at, um, I picked up some other uh, accents as well. But when I was in the University of North in Japan, uh, the accent and the, the the lingo is completely different. So it's kind of like the UK, you know, it's like mm-hmm. you could be in London and not understand a single word, you know, what the people are saying, even though you're in London and uh, which I think is also pretty cool. But, you know, Osaka is extremely different than Tokyo, which is different than Niigata, which is where I went to university. And so I picked up the uh, the dialect there as well. So, um, yeah, so there's four dialects that I can go back and forth from. Anyway, yeah. Have, have you ever seen the French film, Welcome to the Sticks, I think it's called? No, and it's I have about, not. It's about a guy from the south of France who uh-huh. goes up to, it's a comedy film, and he goes up to work in the north of France. Oh. And, he can't, and, and he can't understand a word anyone's saying. It's brilliant. So yeah. it's like, it's all about the different dialects. He's, um, cool. he goes up there thinking there's going to be polar bears and all of that because it's freezing cold and all of this sort of stuff. It's absolutely hilarious. I well, highly I recommend it. You know, what you've yeah. just said there about people not understanding each other, it's just great to hear that that's like, you know, like it's, 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 it's worldwide, isn't it? Like everyone it's speaks everywhere. very within their own, own countries, yeah. Absolutely. And yeah, I'm originally from the United States. I left when I was, I don't even remember, I was about 19 years old. But I mean, even within the United States, depending on where you go, you're going to have issues with, you know, the language. Hell, majority of people in America can't even speak English. So anyway, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a, I, when I used to live in Sheffield, I had a friend uh, and his girlfriend was from Spain, but she spoke with the oh. Yorkshire accent. And uh, That's we hilarious. called it, but she sounded Icelandic. So they used to call her Bjorkshire. Oh, wow. So. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant i love it yeah, yeah. yeah. so i i also <laughs> speak spanish as well and and so you know when <laughs> it's so uh, i speak spanish from spain right and so when i speak to people from mexico they're like wait a minute you know where are you from <laughs> so they're yeah. because you know they always figure since i'm from the united states that the spanish they speak will be from latin america but no yeah it's spanish which even in spain is completely different from the north and the south which is pretty cool so anyway Crazy. enough of that the thing is yeah. i mean as as humans we're so attuned to the, f- the very infinitesimally small cues not yeah. only in terms of language facial expressions but also movement and you've right. made movement your life right so right. um what we, kind of so i know that was a great segue, <laughs> good segue. Um, yeah yeah, I, yeah you practice yeah. that was a good one yeah yeah i know i know <laughs> uh I'll, so i'm looking smug because everyone can see me now um but uh basically <laughs> Basically, um, so you came to the Japan and you and you you you, right from the start, martial arts was part of your life. So what's kind of led you down to take to taking GMB online and and then growing it to the global kind of brand that it is now? Yeah, just really quickly. um, I grew up, um, started gymnastics from a very, very young age, and I competed uh, in gymnastics until I was 18. Uh, while I was in high school, I should say what secondary school is that correct in, uh, yeah, in yeah. England, I guess. Um, I took up a martial art while also doing gymnastics. So I would go to my gymnastics practice. After that, I would go to my martial arts practice. And um, I've never been one to kind of half ass things. I ended up coming to Japan for um, martial art, obviously. So the martial art I did I mean was kendo and judo. And so while I was actually, I, I did that, graduated from university and started working at that shrine, as I mentioned. While I was there, I wanted to obviously get better at my judo and the other martial arts that I was doing. So while I was at the shrine, when I, as an interpreter and doing the work I was doing there, I would actually participate in the martial art classes as the interpreter. So I would be not just be doing judo and kendo, I'd also be doing other martial arts as well. And so there was a lot of stuff going on. And so I wanted to make sure that I was able to actually continue to do what I wanted to do 
um, without breaking in my body so much, which still happened. But my original purpose was to be able to better type people up into pretzels, but it came to actually change when I was like, okay, what if I look at this in a different way? What if I actually look at how I can build things up and, and do that? So I really, really got into looking at joint integrity and joint wellness, the health of joints, especially because, you know, judo and, and a lot of the things I was doing incorporated um, joint locks as well as it's just putting yourself in compromised positions and just puts a great strain on the body. So I actually went and started, went back and studied and I actually got into um, an organization that I was very deeply involved with and ended up over the years becoming the program director for that particular organization. And that's where I met um, my business partners in GMB, Jarlo Elano and Andy Fawcett. And so we met through there. And so um, the change really kind of happened when there was a time where uh, it was my, I was in judo, it was my last competition in judo. I had my shoulder dislocated and tore all the ligaments. I had to have constructive, uh, reconstructive surgery on my shoulder and it kind of finished everything. And my wife was like, hey, you're done. And so uh, you, you need to focus on being able to keep bringing in the money for the family. So I was like, okay. So that really kind of changed. And so at that time, I mean, I was only what, I think it was 32 at the time. And, you know, I mean, looking back now, I'm 50 right now and looking at back, you know, that age, I mean, still young, you know, I was like, I'm not done. And I want to continue to be able to do the stuff I wanted to do. I was just really lucky because Jarlo really kind of pushed me to be like, hey, you know, what if you were to teach this stuff and here's some other stuff. And so what it was is we actually looked at, okay, decided to start company. And back then we called it gold metal bodies. And it really was kind of taking a look at not that people are old. Okay. But people are getting older. They have responsibilities. They have a life. They have to take care of their family. They, they go to work during the day and then they have a little bit of time, maybe after work to maybe come back, move their bodies and look at fitness air quotes. And rather than going to the gym, we're thinking, okay, there's a better way that people could possibly do this without having to go to the gym. They could still actually enjoy it. And Ryan, hey, let's come up with something and do that. And so that's kind of where it started, to be honest. And Jarlo and I had actually worked on a program before GMB together, which was yoga-based. And so, our, but our very first program in GMB was actually rings based and that was rings one and that came about because Jarla sent me a pair of gymnastics rings and he was like hey man you should get back into doing some of that gymnastics stuff you used to do but in a different way and looking at guys our age who want to actually like enjoy fitness you know shouldn't there be a different way and so that was kind of where it started and we basically just wanted you know to make cool shit. That was kind of like our business plan. That was really it, you know, that was it. And it went well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, and, I've, I've used weight rings one myself and I just found the progressions really, really intuitive. They was challenging, you know, you suddenly yeah, realize, yeah. You, you suddenly realize that, that the sheer joint stability that gymnasts have, you, 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 un, you understand, your body sends you very clear messages as soon as you get onto the ring. Um, but there was a very scaled progression. So uh, it sounds like, you know, having been through a, a major injury in your shoulders, and I've done judo until I was 18, and most oh, of the cool. injuries yeah. I carry, my, carry myself now, whether it's my toe or my knees or my ankles or things like that, have come through being thrown against walls by accident and landed on and Absolutely. things. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and the thing is about rings is you only kind of get the chance to make a mistake once because <laughs> yeah. if you're using yeah. your entire body weight in a shoulder, it can be challenging. And it, and, right. and it was, That's it was right. great fun to follow and it was a sense of progression. So, I mean, you saw initial success with that program. We did. Um, so Jarlo and I are not business savvy, um, but one of my friends, Andy Fawcett is, and so in the beginning, we actually, the three of us said, hey, let's start this company together. I think we had like a piece of paper and we wrote like, we'll split profit three ways or, you know, whatever. And that was just kind of how it started. And we each kind of had our own roles, but we all wore 
multiple hats. And so, you know, the programming I would lay out, Jarla would look at it, Andy would, you know, say, well, what about, what about this way? And then we would look at how we want to present it. And we put everything online. And so we are one of the very first companies doing this online. And I think that was a big reason why, one of the reasons why it actually kind of took up. We were kind of the first people kind of doing it, you know, and also it was the rings. And there was two other places. It was actually just one other rings program at that time. And it was by an Olympian. And it was just basically videos of him doing his workouts. And so we, from the get-go, let people know, okay, listen, we're not trying to be gymnasts here, okay? We're using movements that helped me when I was a gymnast for conditioning. We're looking at in a way that it's going to help people that are like us, the three of us. And then Jarlo, as a doctor of physical therapy, had his view in saying, okay, and these this is why this is good. And so we would create articles. We wrote so many articles and blog posts and shot videos. And I was so uncomfortable in front of the video because I'd never been in front of a video camera before, you know, and had to do YouTube videos. And so, you know, we really just put our effort into doing that. And it was our side hustle. This was not our main job, our jobs, you know, and we did that for quite a while. And we actually took our profit that we had to hire people to work for us rather than us taking a salary. And so we did that for quite a few years and uh, really, really focused on not just that product, but how can we always look and get better and eventually worked towards creating a system, a method, and moved away from it just being about tricks or programs if you will and made it more about the method and so even though we started with the rings that's not our main focus right now our main focus is how can i help you move better for the things you want to do in your life it's not about doing more fitness it's not about doing more exercise it's about looking at what you need in order to help you to surf better do brazilian jiu-jitsu play with your kids you know? Yeah. I We're think looking that's at it because what physical I, autonomy, sorry. physical autonomy is our theme. That's what we're, yeah. Well, just I mean, in the end, when, when you've earned that autonomy, kind of the rings are quite not easy, but they are much more intuitive. Understandable. Exactly. Understandable. And that's so, it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so you now actually have a language. It's, it's, it's like anything. I mean, because we're talking about language or you could even look at music. You can't hope to just all of a sudden speak, right? There's a process. And unfortunately, a lot of people get hung up on looking at that sexiness of wanting to be able to speak fluent Spanish and say, okay, first off, we got to have this foundation. And first off, the most important thing is, is why? Why are you doing this? And the reason for that is because you know, if you have that very, very strong why, and you know exactly why you want and you need this, there's certain things that you can cut out and actually not have to worry about that are going to help you get you towards your path to physical autonomy more efficiently and actually make it more fun. And, and really, that's the thing. And so that's why in GMB, we don't have a standard um double weight body you know a a double weight barbell squat or or something like that because it's all dependent upon what you need and it comes back also if we're looking at flexibility because there's three things we're always looking at strength flexibility mobility which is a little bit different of course right so you know flexibility is mobility is flexibility to movement but we're also looking at motor control which a lot of places to be out honest out there kind of gloss over sometimes and so this is a big proponent of what we're doing is looking at how those three things need to work together in order to give you what you need for the things you enjoy in your life and so that's why we're able to chunk these as well and say okay well by going through the assessment that we had you can see okay i'm lacking in strength therefore this is something i can work on i need better range of motion in my shoulders in order to x okay therefore i'm going to do this and so we're really looking at 
using the AAA framework, which is, um, you know, assess, address, and apply, which is our framework to being able to assess and see what you need so that you can really, really get to the heart of your why and move towards that more efficiently. I love, I love that. Everything you just said there, I've, I've written loads down because, because <laughs> I, I think about this a lot as well. And I, 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 I've, it's a similar sort of thing, but I, I, I always use um, um, stability, mobility, and motor control, and then you know, yeah. so stability instead of strength. But it's it's a similar thing. Sure. You'll be able to hold Absolutely. the position, and then you get people into positions, and they're like, "Yep, yeah, yeah, I've got it, I've got it." It's like, no, you haven't, because you can't breathe, and all of that sort of right. stuff. I, I love that. Exactly. And, and the way I look at it is, it's a, and what you've just said, people can start where they're at, and that it's. I, I mean, this is this is how it should be, right? This is like, you know, how I think people, when they get into the industry or when they start off on a program, they want the thing, but then they realize yeah. actually to get to that, there's a, there's a roadmap. So if you go into yes. Google maps and type, I want to go to somewhere down, somewhere a hundred miles away, you'll get three or four Multiple. different routes, won't you? Yeah, exactly. And you, exactly. you can choose the fastest one if you want to get there yep. quickly. You can right. choose the cross country if you don't want to go on the motorway or the highway right. or whatever. You can choose your way, and it's what what I like about that is you make it you make it so that people are it's it's for you, whoever right. you are, it is for you, and you make it your own. Right. Now the question I've got is, yes. you went back to the rings. Your friend yes. said, "Let's uh, go back to the rings." What was that like after not doing it for for years? Because obviously, the people who we talk to on this podcast are going to be like, "Oh, I used to do stuff years ago," and then they're going to want to get back to that, right? Like Absolutely. instantly. Yes. So what, so what was it like yeah. for you being a, having competed in that? It was tough. It was humbling. <laughs> and, and, um, well, especially the fact that, you know, I was coming off of this shoulder injury, but more so than that, I think that <laughs> a lot of us still live in the, Oh, I used to be able to do this. Therefore it's going to be easy. Like riding a bike. <laughs> Is it really, you know, I mean, there are certain things, yes, that, that can happen, but, but there's so many things involved with this. And so this is why when we look at strength, we're not just looking at, at physical strength in terms of pounds, kilos, being able to move that we're looking at what you mentioned is that stability throughout the body and being able to use that in a productive manner for what you're doing. So again, coming back to what I was saying, but when we're looking at the rings and a big reason why I love the rings is the fact that they don't lie. If you jump above the rings and try and hold yourself up in a top position, and most of the people, it looks like they're having a seizure up there because obviously they're lacking the strength. There's also the motor control component of that in the stabilizer muscles. And so that's why, because, well, because the rings, excuse me, <clears throat> are an open chain piece of equipment. They're not structured in, into the ground. They're not, yeah. they're not uh, touching the ground. And so therefore it's not closed. Yeah, they're open and they move. And so because you have to move around the rings, it's a different kind of strength. And so again, me coming back to the rings after all those years, I was like, yeah, no problem. You know, I'm just going to jump up there and boom and fall on my butt. You know, I'm just like, oh, geez, you know, and like, I, I would get on the rings and try something and I take a video. And this is also something for those of you listening out there, the best, one of the best coaches you can have is something you carry with you every single day. And that's video camera taking video. I remember taking video of myself going, yeah, that was great. And looking at it and going, <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> what am I doing? You know? And so so this, another part of it there, when we're looking at, you know, we have the control stability, we have the flexibility, mobility that we we're just talking about. The other thing in that is also that mental strength, as well as the mental control to be able to move past what you think it should be and actually look at what it is and try and work on bridging those two so that therefore later you're bringing awareness to what you're doing in your body. And that's really where everything has evolved with us in GMB. And to be honest, it's come from our martial arts because all three of us are avid martial artists. We've done martial arts pretty much our whole life. 
who taught martial arts as well for an extremely long time. And what we talk about, it's all about being aware of what's going on. But the problem that we see, similar to when I first, when I jumped back on those rings after having been away for so many years, is that I wasn't aware of really where my body was at that time, even though I had been training in other things and, you know, still very physical with other things. Truly, do you know where you are in your body? A lot of people don't. And yeah. so awareness is really all we're trying to look at. I mean, if we're really just to kind of blanket things over, it's how aware are you, how aware are you of what you can and cannot do in your body? I we're, think not that's judging. A... we're not judging. There's no judgment. There's no judgment. And that's well, why these assessments like you said, it, 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 it is what it is, isn't it? It is what it is. There's no judging it. It just is what it is. And then you've got it. Yep. And then it's it's like, right, that's where you're starting from. Yeah. And, we, and I say, fabulous. Because once you know that, okay, cool. Yeah. Now we can get I'd to like, work. I'd like in what, exactly what you've just said there to like to your parents dancing at a wedding. They think they look great. And the dancer are like, isn't this great? And it doesn't matter what they look like. But the thing, and then you, you might show them a video and they go, well, I didn't, didn't realize I was doing that. I thought I used yeah. to be a great dancer. So, yeah. you know what I mean? So it's, yeah. yeah. But, but here's <laughs> the other way to look at this too, if I can continue on this, is my Ryan, when I was competing in gymnastics, no longer mattered when I was 32 years old, Ryan on the rings. And the reason why, and this is extremely important, I feel as well, especially as I get older, <laughs> is that I realize we change our goals of what we really, not just want, but what we need change. So to give an example, as I mentioned, I'm 50. I turn 50 next week, okay? Now, the re only reason I'm bringing this up is because I still get people from time to time, not so much anymore, who will send me, and they're all young guys, They'll send me a video clip of something. They're like, hey, can you do this? <laughs> and and I don't know. It might be something crazy. I, you know, like maybe on the rings, it might be like some weird, like, you know, movement kind of thing. If I answer, uh, you know, a lot of times nowadays, I'll just be like, nope. And they'll reply, and they'll, well, don't you, did you, could you, don't you want it? I'm like, I just don't care anymore about that sort of thing. That's not where I am right now. And so what I'm getting at is that if we're always comparing ourselves to what we were and not truly looking at where we are and saying, you know what? I don't need to be that anymore because this is what I need to be for my family, for my other things. It actually takes this load off and allows us to really, really appreciate where we are and actually get over looking bad if you will when we're out there dancing as you know an older person or something like that and really that's another thing that i want people to really start to pay more or bring more awareness to is that how do you feel when you're doing it how do you feel to me that is so important because if you feel good when you're doing this and it's helping you sweet you're good yep you're great that's it. You know, I mean, you might like, I don't even know. I don't want to even say anything because there might be something that other people make fun of. But if you enjoy doing that and it makes you feel good, ah, oh, keep doing it, you know? And so the reason that I bring this up is there are people when they do some of our programs because they're animal-based, kind of locomotion, rolling around on the ground kind of thing, they feel weird doing it in the gyms. And they say people will look at them and they feel weird and they're kind of embarrassed. And, you know, I just want to be like, hey, pardon me for saying this, but screw everybody else because no one else matters. OK, it's, it's how are you feeling when you do this? Is it helping you? Cool. You know, and so um, kind of long little bit yeah. there, but basically <clears throat> just trying to say it's about awareness. It's about you. It's about how you feel and where you currently are right now. And this is again, why I think assessments are, or, are so important. And that's also why we have the phrase, good is good enough. And a lot of people misunderstand when I say that because they're like, well, don't you wanna be perfect? I'm like, no, listen, it's just gotta be good enough. And the more that you can just be good enough that adds up over time, instead of just trying to be perfect once, every once in a while and not doing anything else. So just be good enough enough 
and things will start really happening. I think, yeah, um, I mean, quite, some, some I just the- want to, I oh, know, I was just thinking, Peter, because there's a lot to unpack there. And actually, what is one of the reasons why I love getting our guests on is because there's about a million knowledge bombs there that's just been dropped. And if I was to unpack one of them, we could go on for, for a long time. So there's a couple of things that I just want to highlight there. It, it's very interesting you talk about the, the, the context in which you approach movement should be informed by the place in your life because we are not just a expression of a modality. We are not just doing yoga. We are not just going for a run. We are an individual who has context. And that context is two ways. There's the fee, there's the uh, context from your life outside your physical practice that's going inwards and then your physical practice going outwards and both will influence either negatively or positively and therefore yes. your journey that you're trying to take someone on is to say hey where you are now is going to be a culmination of two sides of that experience and i think that's a really interesting way of doing things and because it because it it it, it means that on a daily basis there is a internal observation about where you are and that will change as you said you're now bordering on 50 and when you were 32 you had another set of contexts and when you were 19 and 16 or whatever they and each pl- had different demands so i think that, that's 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 amazing you know and and the thing is one of the reasons i i initially signed up to one of your programs well i've, I've got quite a few now um <clears throat> uh, was the a lot of the videos that you did and a lot of the um social media outreach were real people achieving these results obviously i could see that you'd done them and i come across videos on youtube of, of you performing things but i was more inspired by the fact that you would post someone's journey on the rings who was doing it or i think there's one on a scaffolding as a guy set himself up yeah. on some scaffolding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know yeah. things like that 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 was a big thing because that was a guy who probably had injuries or kids or whatever and he was right he was he looked great and i was thinking god i wish i could get as good as him in six months you know well, okay, two things. First of all, uh, we have a phrase that we use for what you just talked about. It's called auto-regulation. And so I love making programs, but in a perfect world, I would be there with you so that we could talk about what's going on so that we can make these micro adjustments according to what's going on with you that day. But that's why we have auto regulation. And so auto regulation is the uh, regulating the self, depending on what's going on, not just right now, but overall in your life. So let's say, for example, that on a piece of paper, it says today is your high intensity day. Does that mean you should be doing that if you didn't sleep because you're up really late with your baby who was sick all night? or you just had the most stressful whatever happened, whatever. Okay, but no, no, you got to get in there and it's your high intensity day. And you've got to nail this, okay, today because it's the most important thing, right? Okay. Well, maybe it is. If it's your job, if that's your job, if you're getting paid to do that, okay, yes, that is, okay? But if you're a hobbyist, okay? And there's a big difference here. And a lot of people get a little upset when I talk about this, but hey, I'm going to say it. If you're not getting paid, then let's look at longevity. Let's not look at just now and crushing things today. Let's look at being able to expand that for as long as we possibly can and take the question to what do you need today? What do you need today? That's auto regulation. And so it could, I always say this, always step on the mat, at least step on the mat every single day if you can. Step on the mat. Start your prep work. We don't say warm up. We say prep work. I can go into that a little bit later. We have the five P's, which is you prep, you practice, you play, you push, and you ponder. That's how we go through a session. But you first step on the mat. And the reason why is also the opposite of this is there are days where you don't want to work out. But you start the prep. It's just like, oh, I just really don't feel like working out today. But you step on the mat, you start preparing your body, you end up having the best session you've had in just months, okay? If you had just said, I don't feel like I'm just going to go home and watch TV, 
No, that would have never happened. So what I'm saying is not just give things up, but truly, truly be aware of what's going on in your body and at least show up, do the prep and then make adjustments. And I think if we can do that, I think that it's going to allow us to continue to be good for a very, very long time. I, that's what I do now. I mean, this is one of those things where, you know, you, you, even, you know, 10 years ago, I wish I was better in tune with this, but, but again, it, it's a process, of course, you know, as you go through, and this is something that we really, really have to always talk about in GMB. This is what truly is auto regulation and how you do it. And the other thing I want to say is, this is also why I don't like naming movements i don't like putting a name on something because as soon as you hear something you have a preconceived notion of how you think it should be and therefore you think that you have to do it that way instead of truly truly going okay what am i doing in my body if i were say a push-up right immediately you have an image of a push-up that comes in there okay but are you able to Feel what you need to do when you're doing that rather than just putting a label on it because a push-up that I do might be different than the way that you do it and so the goal is what's the most important thing is why you're doing it and so again whole other topic we could go super deep with but I just want I mean, to you, say that about auto regulation you can't be talking about muscle groups and things like that you must be talking I mean what so when you're explaining things you're yeah. not saying this is going to activate the bicep and the uh I we you know nope. I just no, screw, or whatever. it's a movement. Yeah. Okay, no, yeah. And yeah. I yeah, yeah, we can break that down. We can get into the anatomical, you know, portions of this. We're looking at hands and scapular elevation and look at what's going on within the you know shoulder blades and things like that. Yes, some of those things do need to happen, but how does it feel when you're up there? Okay. Now, for example, just take a look at the push-up. You see a lot of people with their elbows out to the side when they're doing their push-ups and things like that. Okay. I don't do it that way. Okay. And the reason why is I like having shoulders that work. And so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's diplomatic. Yeah. So that's one thing. But the other thing is that the goal. So when I'm looking at push-ups, okay, because we've seen so many people with this happening when they're doing the, the push-ups, that's fine. So where we need to start with is being able to pull everything down. When we pull these elbows in, it's going to solidify the body, activate the entire body to work together. Therefore, we're, we're creating a stronger platform. Okay, great. That's the push-up. But why? Because the other movements that we want to be able to do in GMB will need to have those elbows in. And if you don't have that initial form down and you don't know what it feels like and you can't perform it smoothly, you're not going to be able to practice those quote, quote, advanced movements once you get to them. And the problem is, is that if you just try and jump up there and do those, you're probably going to get injured. And so that's why when we're looking at particular movements, I give suggestions in how I feel particular movements could be done in a way that's going to allow you to continue to practice movements and continue to work on variations without um, the fear of getting injured. And that's very important to me is, is a lot of us do have a fear of being injured. Um, certain things like twisting the body, moving, you know, you know, cross chain, cross sling of the body and moving the body. And people just try things because they think it looks cool on the internet, you know, on Instagram or something like that, not knowing the protocol, if you will, and how to bring awareness to the body to be able to practice these things in a way that's going to allow them to do it smoothly and safely. And that's, that's the other thing that we're just trying to do in GMB. We're not, here you go. Here's one for you. I'm not um, a fitnesser. Okay. We are not a fitness company, to be honest. It's in our name, GMB Fitness. We're actually an education company because all we're trying to do is educate people through physical awareness. So I'm basically a PE teacher. And that's actually what I tell people when I do get on a plane and someone, when do you do for work? And I say, I'm a PE teacher. And right away the conversation stops because they assume that I'm like, you know, in the United States, like an eighth grade 
physical education teacher with whistle and make people run laps and you know do all this stuff. No, okay, it's a little bit different, but it's kind of also difficult to explain exactly what we do with GMB Fitness as well. So yeah, sorry, kind well, of went it. off on a tangent there, but no, yeah. no, it's fascinating. I mean, the thing is, it's like in traditional strength conditioning. I say traditional, I mean, there's loads of different subgenres, but you know, you add weight and then you see yeah, progress. So yeah, from, from absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. and then in body weight training, I mean, that's one of the things when I started going down that body weight rabbit, rabbit hole, the, the, the setting expectations of what progress look like and also setting expectations of what you can achieve, because what you find is like with a deadlift, once you have your rough, oh, form, yeah. you yeah. know that you can add weight and then sometimes oh, you cycle yeah. back and then you keep going up and okay. there's extra moves that you can add in. But yeah. then when, when it came to doing body weight stuff, you were like, I would just have hard walls that I would just hit. <laughs> sure. And I would sure. just go, I've got to walk. Like It's like trying to find another bridge on a river. Sometimes that bridge is 20 miles away. And that's there the you route go. you have to go, you know? Absolutely. And that can be weird for someone who's a beginner particularly. So how have you got around that? How have you yeah, managed absolutely. to and this is focus? That's exactly what we're after. And, and, and the trouble is, is that a lot of people, this is so new to them, Okay. But everyone knows what to do because we all taught ourselves to walk and to move when we were little kids. This is, I don't want to compare ourselves to children too, because that's a whole other thing. I'm not saying that, you know, as a kid and, you know, you should be able to do this and you should play like a kid. No, we should play like an adult, you know, because our minds are a bit more advanced than children. But anyway, <sighs> When you look at all the different kinds of body weight training we have out there, calisthenics, I mean, I don't even know. You've got like just the movement locomotion people. You've got the handstanders. You know, you've got all these different things out there. It can be quite confusing. A lot of people are, are chasing skills, okay? Now, we are a skill-based company in the, in the fact that the skill is simply a tool to allow us to bring greater awareness to our bodies to let us know if we're feeling better and doing better in the activities that we're doing. So if we're looking at just a particular skill, then we might base our um, advancement on, can I now do the handstand? If I can't, damn it, I'm a bad person. I can't do it, okay? <laughs> or you might base it on, um, I don't, I don't even know muscle up. I didn't get the muscle up. I didn't get three reps of the muscle up. Okay. That's strictly looking then at that particular movement pattern. That's how we started with GMB, to be honest, was looking at those skills and saying, okay, this is what we're after. But as I mentioned now that it's changed where it's a method and I can't say to you, I think you should be getting your one arm hand in. That's what you got to get. You've got to work on that. That's what's going to give you clarity in your life. I can't say that. I don't know. Okay. What I do know is that if you know exactly what you want to be able to do outside of your physical practice, how you want to feel, we can help you to get there. And the way that you judge of whether or not you're getting better in your physical practice is how are you feeling here? Really, that's it. And it could just be a matter simply of saying, okay, I might not be able to get into a full deep squat, but you know what? I was playing with my kids the other day and I didn't have any issues at all. First time in a month, I feel great. Success. Okay. Does that mean you stop? No. Okay. But this is where I'm talking about where, you know, we have people come to us and say, you know, I really want to get full center splits. And we're like, oh, cool. Okay. You know, like all the way down to the ground, I want center splits. I'm like, cool. What do you want that for? And they're like, well, I don't know. I just think it'd be really cool. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, let's talk about it. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but sometimes we find people who realize they don't need that. And, and to be honest, you know, getting to kind of 80% is a lot easier than trying to get to that full 100%. Right. So it's kind of that 80 20 rule that you have there. Over time, you can eventually get there. But the sheer effort that it's going to take to get that extra 20% all the way down. And if you don't really need it again, then you might be better off like working on some other stuff as well. 
And so again, I'm not trying to discourage people from going after these particular goals. I'm actually just trying to say, listen, are you really, really clear on what you want? It's kind of like the person who says, you know what? I really want abs. I'm like, dude, I can get you abs, no problem. Just take a bunch of cocaine. You're going to see your abs. You're going to be ripped. <laughs> Official You're advice. Gonna be ripped. You're going to be ripped, right? Can I, can I just say, don't listen to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's a joke, everyone. That, that is a joke. I do, not, I do not recommend you doing that at all. Yeah. Well, I knew yeah. someone who used cocaine for piles, so don't worry. Oh, geez. Wow. Fair enough. Yeah, what I'm getting method. at basically is let's look at really, okay, yeah, I, I can help you to get those abs, but what after that, what is it that you really, really are after? And that's really what I want to know. And so, um, yeah. It's funny yeah. It's funny you talk about auto-regulation because I'm, I mean, I, I'm on a program at the moment that I get from my coach. Um, and today I've, I haven't done it because it's, it, it's lifting kettlebells and stuff like that. And it's in oh. my cycling through a strength cycle and it's got heavy this week. And I usually do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but I'm going up to Newcastle tomorrow to see my family. So I was having to do two days in a row. Yeah, and I said to my coach, go. I think it's going to be heavy. And he goes, you should, it should be, it, it'll, it might be okay. Yesterday was heavy. Today I, I picked the bell up, felt okay. And then I got to my heavy set in one move and it just, it, it just didn't feel right. So I, I sent him a message. I said, I'm not doing it today. I've got some pull-ups to do. I'm going to do those because they're easy for me. Um, and the assessment for me is, so Paul alluded to this earlier as well, and you've just said it exactly right. The assessment is, I like to go walking with my dog every day for a couple of hours. Cool. If I hurt myself and I can't do that, that is going to be my life over as far as I'm concerned, right? So today, if I hurt myself and I can't go walking with my dog, that's it. And then I'm there meant to be going away this weekend. If it ruins all that, that would be a nightmare. So I'd rather not do the session and come back to it next week than be the hero. And I think that's that's just, it, it took me a lot. Like years ago, I would have been, no, no, it's in my program. I'm going to bloody do it. But I'm, I'm, I'm 46 in a couple of months. I'm like, nah, sure. <laughs> it doesn't work like that anymore. Right, so right. I love that. Yeah, you nailed it. And that's what I'm trying to get at. And like when we're younger, it's different. You know, it was like, you know, dude i would go out you know stay up all night you know, big drinkers in japan by the way like big drinkers okay and every single night after judo or whatever martial art i was doing you go out drinking you know eat tons of food wake up i still rip the next morning you know no hanger i fine good boom practice in the morning keep doing it. uh-uh you know like there are times in your life where that changes and so like i mentioned earlier i'm not trying to suggest that people just stop what you're doing and just give up everything no 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 Truly, truly look at just exactly what you said. What is the most important thing in your life? And what do you still want to be able to do? And adjust accordingly, because that's just it. It's like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. You know, I love Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but it drives me crazy when these people are like, they, they just go so hard all the time. And they're just like, oh, I'm just so beat up. And I'm just, I can't move. And it's awesome. That's the only way to get better at Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's, you know, I'm just like, you know, when you're 20 or something, maybe you can think that. But, you know, pick your battles is basically what I'm trying to say. So as you get older, be smart about it. And really, that's where I think being selfish is important. Be mm. selfish. And really look at what's important to you. And are you doing the things that are going to allow you to feel the way you want to feel for longer periods of time? Yeah, I think I think Sorry, an I, got interesting, little, I got a little excited there. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think that brings up a, a very important uh, issue that most uh, trainers, um, you know, you name it, any health specialist will, will deal with, which is consistency. So when you're talking about those daily assessments, there is some implied suggestion that that person, you know, that really works when you have someone like, probably like myself, who can quite happily train regularly without doubt five days a week. And I will sure. always make time for it. So on, on a Tuesday, if I wake up in the morning, I'm like, I don't feel great. I kind of know I'm in on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Absolutely. I have that consistency. But sometimes I'm dealing with people who are by their nature, very inconsistent and i'm sure you experience that on your website i mean the great thing about websites time. is you have analytics All and so time. analytics can show patterns so what are right. you doing 
in order to maintain to, 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 to instill that philosophy of judgment, but at the same time keep the momentum of training? Absolutely. It's a fabulous question. So we actually have, we don't call it an app, we have a platform that's called Praxis. Uh, P R P R A X I S. For those who don't know, that means practice. Okay, because that's what we're after. You, we don't work out in GMB. We practice. That's how we look at everything because we feel that everything is a skill. And if you can look at bringing more awareness to what you're doing in the moment, you're going to get better at everything. This is also why we don't use repetitions. We use time-based training. That way. You're focusing on doing, as I like to say, do one single rep as beautifully as possible, then try another. That's the way we look at it. Now, coming back to your question, when you come into the program, there is the first screen every single day. Do you want to do a 15-minute session, a 30-minute session, or a 45-minute session, or a 60-minute session? Okay, depending on the program that we have, there's also like a 20-minute version of some of them. You choose what you want to do, okay? You go through your prep and the prep we're looking at, for example, let me quickly go through this. I mentioned the five P's where we had the prep practice, uh, play, push, and then the ponder. So our programs are all based up, programmed around what you're really practicing that day. And so you'll have maybe two, typically one to two movements that you practice that day. Well, the prep, is preparing you for those movements. So let's say, for example, that you're going to be doing a movement that is very wrist and shoulder uh, intensive. That means that in your prep, there will be movements that will prepare your wrists and your shoulders. Okay, so the, the warm up basically. Okay, after you perform that prep, screen pops up and say, "How are you feeling today?" Okay, there's a button that says "Ready to rock," or there's one, I'm not really feeling it today, but that doesn't mean you stop that day. It means you go to a low intensity session, which is a which will give you a 15 minute session. So you actually do the session, but it's an abbreviated version of it. That's going to be looking at you getting in the reps, okay, if you will, of actually performing that program and saying, okay, you know what? I might not have done the full 30 minutes that I had planned, but I did this. Congratulations. Therefore, over the long run, you will be making progress. After that, there's a screen that comes up where you actually, you look at, okay, how did the program go? And you look at the movements and you say, well, it felt, it felt sloppy or it felt smooth. Or, you know, how did you feel when you were performing this? And you actually click buttons on there and then finish your session, that's all recorded. So you can actually go back and you can look at, okay, I've done X amount of sessions. And by the way, once you hit a certain point, you know, we have the whole thing. We're not, we don't like to gamify things. We're not trying to gamify things, by the way, okay? We're just trying to let you know that, hey, you've completed 200 sessions or something like that. Give yourself a pat on the back. But we've also got our alpha posse, which is our community. And this is where people go in there and just share. And that community there is about camaraderie and accountability. And that's really what this is about is we've got it within our program there where we've adjusted it. So you determine how much time you have that day. So let's again, say you typically do a 45 minute session. We don't want you to go, I don't have 45 minutes today. I'm just gonna skip my entire session. Oh, that's so cool. You got 15 minutes, let's do it. And, and again, are you going to make the same progress as, you know, doing it every single day? No, but you know what? That's cool. Again, let's look at the longevity aspect of this. Let's just simply step on the mat and, and make it simple to do the thing. It's like a person who says, you know what? I'm going to do 100 push-ups over the next month. No, you're not. You're not going to do it because you're going to wake up and there's a day and it's going to be like, I don't feel like doing 100 push-ups, okay? What I suggest is waking up doing two push-ups. Two. You do two, you probably end up doing 10. You probably continue to do more. But the thing is, is you've set that bar so low that it'd be stupid not to do it. 
And that's kind of what we're doing because we know that we're all human. There are days we don't want to do this. And especially if you're just coming off of the couch or you're just coming back from not exercising or something like that, you know, sorry, you're not <laughs> always going to be motivated to want to do those sessions. And we have a lot of people who only do three sessions. I say only, you know, who do three sessions a week. They program in three sessions a week. Something might come up. And so that's what we're trying to do is make it, make it so that they want to do it, but they're not chastised for not having done it. You know, you're a horrible person. Why didn't you do that program? Don't you want it bad enough? Okay. And okay. We've all, we've all got our own thing going on. And so what we're again, just trying to do is say, Hey, listen, let's just step on the mat and let's at least just try this and see how it goes. And if, the more if, you can do with that, it happens. Yeah. Sorry. 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 To interrupt. I thought you finished. Um, Everything you've said there is has really resonated with me right now because I'm I'm putting together stuff about this about like the neurology of behavior change and I don't know if yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's exactly what you yeah. you've done with this but that is exactly what it's just said to me because you you know you can kind of you can you can be writing down your wins for the day you can be journaling to see what your language is and how you talk to yourself and how you feel yeah. and whether there's any patterns that turn up um you've got your direction review of are you going in the right yep. way like you know the patterns that turn up so if someone is in your app and every day that can don't feel great today haven't I don't feel great today i'll do the 50 minutes it's like right it's not you don't need this you need to sort that out first so right. you've got and, and and that be the that neurology of behavior change is brilliant and that is all that is in your program without pe without right. people even realizing it Right. And, and that's what we're after. We, we want it to be seamless. And so just sorry to interrupt you, but as fine. you mentioned, you might have a person who you notice that every single session they do, they just, they're like not feeling it today, not feeling it. Well, after a few sessions, we actually have one of our support people contact them and say, Hey, we noticed that this is going on. Are you doing okay? That's brilliant. So, so, so this is important to us. And so that's what we've really tried to focus on doing that. I can't be in that room with you, but I want it to kind of be like I'm in that room with you. And so this is why it's not a follow along program as well, which a lot of people are kind of confused because you come to the program, it's right there. You got the intro video, I'm right in your face there. Hey, you know what's going on? You start your day and you say, okay, here's what you're going to be doing today. And there's a tutorial that pops up. You watch that tutorial and then a timer comes on and say, okay, it's time to do the work. Okay, you hit that timer and maybe you do a minute of that particular thing. Well, some people are like, well, there's just a timer going and I, you know, like, what am I supposed to do? And I'm like, do the thing. And what we're really trying to do is help people again to bring more awareness to what they're doing by not following along with the teacher. This is also why, you know, when I did martial arts, my instructors never used mirrors. And so what they had us do is they work on it, you work on it, and then you feel it, and then you put it into action and see if it works. Okay. And that's the that to me is one of the most important things is you take action. You know, you can journal, you can do all your stuff, but if you don't take action, nothing will ever happen. And that's what we're trying to do is people are very excited in the first few weeks. You get a new program and you're like, sweet, I'm, yes. That starts to wane, okay? We all know this, okay? So what we need to do then is start, I don't want to say programming, helping people to create good habits so that they at least just want to start. Because again, I can't stress this enough. You know this. The only way anything will ever happen is if you take action mm. and get over that fear. And, and not getting over it, but embrace that fear. Understand that you're going to suck in the beginning. You're not going to be good at what you're doing. That's also why I say embrace the suck. And people misunderstand that and think that, I mean, it's got to be tough. Okay, no, understand that you will suck at a movement. The faster you can embrace the fact that you're not going to be good at this thing, but you're going to do it anyway, leads to you getting better faster. 
Mm. And so again, taking action and then also taking not just responsibility for yourself, but also having accountability through, for example, being on the forums with other people who are just like you, who are not professional athletes, who, who might've been overweight and they're still working on their way in there, but they're like doing these weird movements and they're like, Oh my God, I I'm feeling so much better. And they're like, yeah, cool. And they support each other and you are you notice. I never have my shirt off in a video. I don't. And a lot of, I wear jeans and I have a t-shirt on typically when I'm teaching these movements. And our thing is if you can't do it in jeans, can't do it. Okay. It's a little <laughs> joke. It's a little joke, but I mean, that's very, that's br very brave of you. Cause then like, so how dare you wear jeans when you, it's like, you can wear whatever you like. It doesn't matter. <laughs> exactly. And that's what we're trying to say. And I don't take my shirt off. Okay. Some people be like, Oh, it's cause you're not ripped. And I'm just like, whatever, dude. Okay. It's yeah. not about me. And that's really what we're trying to do here is bring it all back to that. It's that day. What do you need for where you are in your life in order for you to continue to take action? so that you can achieve the things that you want to be able to do outside of your fitness. That's really where it's at. I think um, it's interesting you talked about, and I'll just bring it back to something you, you were talking about earlier, which was um, we often use the comparison to about how children learn. And also you, you, you spoke about like, we actually have an adult brain in, in it. And our, the adult brain is a more effective tool. You know, it is a more advanced system as it were. But one of the advantages that children bring is not necessarily, okay, yes, there's certain plasticity, but they do it without judgment and they do it and, and exactly. they take movements without, it's not they say they don't have emotion there, but they don't beat themselves up. They don't carry the weight of their life into every single movement and therefore they learn without that impedance. And so right. I think if you can learn as an adult, and I think a lot of people do with great joy, which is what I think kids do very well is they yeah. learn with joy. I think you can make faster progress as an adult than you could ever make as a child. You can pick up a language quicker. You can get stronger faster. Uh, yes, of course, you, you may have injuries you have to overcome. But, uh, but I, think, I think the whole way you're explaining to learn is something that's, that's, that's very, it's not this contrary. It's just, it's never, I mean, I think you've created an elegant solution, particularly with that way of how do I feel? I think, you know, for, for a lot of people that I know and a lot of my client base who are, super stressed super high performing um <laughs> they want to perform highly all the time but sometimes it's just showing up is the win i think it, right. you never know how a workout's going to go until you start but you have to give yourself the option to start and i think by having that kind of self-reflection just built into the program beautifully elegant and i and i i don't know many online systems that have taken that route and i'm, I'm really excited to hear that that was that was one of your solutions thank you um you know the just step on the mat it was actually from my judo coach and there was i was going to training i just did not want i just didn't want to be there you know i was i was the only non-japanese and just every day getting crushed and it's just you know you have those days and i remember there are two things that he always said he's like hey just step on the mat all right just get going okay and i remember i was very lucky at the opportunity to train at the castle here. So Osaka Castle, uh, inside of the castle, there's actually a martial arts complex called the Shudokan. And the Shudokan actually kendo and judo there. And as a kid from relatively small place in the United States, coming to Japan, but getting to walk to a castle a few times a week and train judo there was amazing. But, you know, you have those days where you get the butterflies and you don't want to be there. And my coach would just be like, hey, just step on the mat. The other thing that he always told me was, or he told me once that I won't forget is, I remember asking him, I was like, hey, is training going to be really hard today? He's like, it's up to you. <laughs> and, and, and I just, I still think about that, like, all the time, because we control that, okay? And what can you control? That's the most important thing. Let go of the things you can't control. And so really that's all it is, is it's up to you, you know, just first to step on the mat and then you determine how that session is going to be based on, you know, the intensity of that session, you know, so that the other thing too, is that 
you mentioned the play aspect. Well, that's number three in, in our training, as I mentioned before, where we had the prep, the practice, and the play. And it is pretty amazing. Like you said, as adults, we actually kind of get in the way of us being able to learn like a child because we do have like our brain going 100 miles an hour and thinking about different things. And oh my God, what am I going to look like? And you know, when we're learning a language, I don't want to say something incorrectly and look stupid. I'm, how the heck are you going to learn? Okay. Play aspect of our session, that section of play is actually where we take a movement that we're already relatively comfortable with and we explore it. Mm. And so play can only happen on the edge of your ability. Play cannot happen spontaneously if you don't actually have the ability or the capability to be able to use a particular movement. And so a lot of people, a lot of people look at, at movements and say, I want to move like that. And they say, I'm just going to play around with this. But again, you've got to have a framework and a foundation mm -hmm. first and understanding of that particular position in order to actually try and expand that box. So a lot of people look at play just thinking you're going to run around and jump do this thing. But Play can actually be where you take a movement, let's say the push-up, because we all just imagine the push-up. And we actually, because we have worked on keeping our elbows close to our body, shoulders packed down, uh, when we're performing this, we say, okay, well, what would happen if I were actually to turn my fingers out to the side? How does this change the movement? That's exploration. That's one simple, simple ex example of exploration. We're not just running around, you know, on monkey bars and doing that sort of thing. You can do that. But another thing can also be looking at tempo. How slowly can you perform a movement? How well are you able to you know, jump and land softly? That's exploration, play. It's taking things that you've already not mastered, okay, but you're comfortable and you have an understanding of this movement because you mm -hmm. practiced it. Then you take that and you try and, you know, change it up slightly. And this is how we can play. And that, that to me is where a lot of the magic happens. And you start to learn so much about your body. You're like, oh, wow, that's interesting. I didn't think that was going to happen. Then you can start practicing that variation. And the thing is, I don't feel that there are actually progressions of movements anymore. This is something that over the years I've kind of changed. I feel that there's only variations on the foundation movements. Mm. And if you look at it that way, it kind of changes a lot of things. Now there are certain things where I feel, okay, before you do this particular movement, it would be good to have these few things down. But to be honest, it's simply just a variation of that. And so you know, elements is a great example of that. We have four movements, four basic movements, the bear, monkey, frog, or crab. But in my mind, I don't just see that. What I did was I looked at some of the end goals, like handstand, you know, cartwheels, aerials, flips, these different things, and said, well, what would be that foundation? And, and look at, okay, if we're looking at a squat, and a lot of people immediately might think a barbell squat. You might think a kettlebell, you know, a double rack squat or something like that. Well, what's the foundation movement? It's a body weight squat unloaded. But what is the proper position of an unloaded body weight squat? All of them. And what I mean by that is that there is none because my goal for a body weight unloaded squat is how many different ways can you get in and out of that squat? And if you change the way that you look at that through exploration and being open to saying, okay, this is simply a variation of X, dude, there's so much out there. Mm. And that's why I can't say, you have to have this, or you should be able to do this. I can suggest certain things, okay? But again, it's up to you to decide if that particular thing is one important and or needed for the other things that you wanna be able to do in your life. And so that's why assessments are great because assessments that we have in there, 
you know, an A-frame, a person looks at an A-frame and they think it's a downward facing dog. Okay, and we say, no, it's because we're not doing yoga. It's because the A-frame is not a position that you have to be in. It's simply looking at where you're at that day. Okay, your, you know, you might have anterior pelvic tilt. Your hips might be tilted in a certain way, okay? You might find that you did some really heavy uh, kettlebell swings yesterday and, you know, or maybe deadlifts or something. Your hamstrings are just tight, okay? And you might have problems really getting your legs straight in that A-frame. Okay, cool, great. That's your assessment. You know that you're super tight today. And so therefore you can actually make adjustments according to that. So, yeah, again, I just talked forever about this sort of stuff because this is what I do, you know, you, but yeah. You, you just, yeah. <laughs> you just got me thinking about the neurology of all that again. Um, well, but again, that's what we're looking at. And I've been, I'm yeah. really lucky because I've got Andy and Jarlo and, you know, and I look at it very differently than they do. And they look, they, you know. But this is, this is getting yeah. people to, to convince themselves, because if you tell someone what to do, they're not going to, they, they don't really listen. If they, if you convince them, like they've, the told, them, they've told yeah, themselves to do it. And the way, yeah. the way we were saying kids will play and they'll practice moves or they'll, they'll in, investigate moves, but they haven't got the whole history of that, right. that hurt last time I did it. This yeah. hurt last time yeah. I did it. They've got to, yes. you've got to build that history. So when you get to an adult, your central nervous system, you'll be sitting there going, I want to be able to do that move, but the last time I did it, it hurt. There's a exactly. there's a YouTube video by a guy called Lorimer Mosley called Why Why Things Hurt or something like that. Cool. Um, if you haven't seen it, I'd I'd suggest I'd suggest you watch it. It's great. And and um and uh, to listeners, I'm talking to Ryan here, but talk to any listener, um, <laughs> watch that video. It's it is brilliant. But it's yeah, you've got to go through that history. So what you've just said about you get comfortable with that movement. And then once you're comfortable with it, because your your central nervous system is saying is saying last time I did this it hurt, so I'm I'm going to protect myself. And then you might be tight, you might tighten up against it and everything. But if you can convince yourself you 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 can do that movement, then once you've got that down and you're like, actually this doesn't hurt anymore, this doesn't, and you've done it a few right. times right. or over a month or so, you're like, do you know what? I'm comfortable with this now. Then you like you say, now let's explore where else right. we can take that. Yeah. And your central nervous system is going to take take the brakes off and just say, yeah fire away and and, and that's, that's it right yeah that's it and and that's and again that's why when i say play i say that's sometimes where all the like a lot of the magic can happen and i like to trick people into being able to see that they can do things without pain mm. and and the way to do that is first off you need to share a variation of a movement that they're going to feel safe with yeah. and continue to make them feel safe. And that's really, I mean, I hope I do a decent job of that when I teach. And that's why a lot of the things that I say, you know, the alpha plastic community, they, they kind of rib me for it, but they're like, yeah, if you can't do it, that's fine. Cause I say that a lot, you know, I'm like, Hey, that's fine. That's cool. You're, it's cool. No problem. You know, like the reason why is because I've been around so many other people who have been pushed uh, into doing certain things, coached in ways that I was like, hmm. whereas me, I don't know what it is, but I've had amazing coaches over the years. My gymnastics coach, you know, my kendo instructor, my judo instructor, my Brazilian jiu-jitsu instructor, like these people that, I mean, thanks to my gymnastics coach, I do what I do now, you know, he had such an impression on me. So, you know, I'm just really wanting people not to just move. I don't want them to just move. A lot of people say that it's not just about moving. It's about using your body in a way that's going to be good for you. Mm. And so, you know, a lot of people are like, well, we just need to move more. And I'm like, okay, I get that, you know, because we sit in chairs and we do things like that. But the thing is, is another way to look at this is, you know, if you work in front of a desk and you have to work in front of a computer all day, rather than 
saying you're a bad person for not, you know, moving very much. I want to say, okay, how can I help you to be able to more comfortably do your job? And looking at it that way, I think can really get that person to go, oh, okay, yeah, that interests me. Instead of saying, you've got to do this. It's like my kids, you know, they're teenagers right now. I can't get them to do anything. So it's kind of <laughs> like, you know, they don't listen to me. So I'm like, my <laughs> wife and I are like, all right, okay. You know, how can we speak to them in a way where they're going to like, oh, okay. Yeah, that interests me. And where people will actually bring curiosity, want to be curious, and they get this result without even realizing it. And they go, oh, my goodness gracious. That's cool. I think I want to continue doing this because it makes me feel better. Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's just these little things. And again, that's why I mean, that's in the beginning when I say good is good enough. That's all I'm really after is just be good enough so that you feel better and just continue to do that, you know? And it, it's when we put pressure on ourselves to think that we have to be training like that Instagram model or um, whoever some new super person is in Marvel. Sorry, I don't follow, but you know, like- <laughs> It's good job James isn't here. Yeah, yeah he's he falling off his chair yeah. with that statement. <laughs> But yeah, I just, you know, I, I get excited about this because that's just what keeps me going, to be perfectly honest. And, right. and it's because I am selfish myself. And, you know, I've cut so much out of my life because I'm like, I'm good now. I'm like, I'm cool, you know? Um, you know? And this is also why a lot of people are like, well, you don't do a whole lot of handstands anymore. And I'm like, I'm cool. You know? I mean, I, 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 it's not that I don't enjoy them anymore, but it's like there's other stuff to be honest that holds my curiosity right now. And so, so what is what, what is holding your curiosity? I mean, on the eve of your fiftieth birthday, yeah, um, are you are you thinking about the future? Like, I, I want to be exploring this area, or is it just like, hey, today look, that looks interesting. I'm going to. It's not random. Out. Yeah, no, it's okay. not random. I will say I do, I'm cyclical. So I do look at cycles and phases of where mm -hmm. I want to be based on uh, certain things that I know I'm going to be doing. Um, heck, I'll share this with you guys. Moving my family to the United States, October 26th, wow. leaving Japan. Wow. And we've, um, yeah, so this is a big. That's huge thing in our life huge so, so that your, kid, is, your kids have drawn, grown up in japan haven't they and obviously they have, happened. Yeah. yeah yeah my wife is japanese my, my my children they're japanese um is their first tongue so english is not their strongest language they understand of english and speak english of course but it's not their strong tongue and so they actually when we go to the united states they're going to probably have to go to it's like ESL, English as a second language, to make sure that they're up to speed so they can participate in classes. But, but yeah, this is huge, is basically what I'm saying. Mm. Uh, he is well, th almost 30 years in Japan. So I'm going to have reverse culture shock. But we're moving to the United States for my, for my children and to be with um, my parents. They're getting older. And so um, I want them all to be there. Anyway, enough of that. Looking at cycles for me, though, is I know that moving on October 26th, but I also understand that this is a huge thing mentally and physically. And this is not a time for me to try and set new PRs in certain things. <laughs> and so, so what I do is I say, okay, what are the things that I enjoy doing, but I know that I can hit it hard without any injury, okay? And it will allow me to continue to train in my martial art as much as possible because I won't be able to be with this group of people when I move to the United States. So, the, so it's changed. So, my, so it's not uh, basically all I'm focused on right now is being able to step on the mat and do my martial art and also go hiking as much as I can while we're still here. So that's where I am right now. Now, when I go to the United States, it's going to change. And so what I do is I look at it that way. But again, everything I do is based on the method. And I just say, all right, let me use AAA framework. I'm going to assess where I'm at. 
I'm going to address particular issues that I might have, then I'm going to apply the necessary protocol to help me with what I want. Then I'm going to continue to assess, address, apply, assess, address, apply, and just keep doing that. And so that's just what I do. And, you know, like today, today I'd really, really, my, I was doing a, a just, I met up just one of my buddies and we just uh, did Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for two hours. We went, I wouldn't say hard, but it just, it was pretty good, you know? I stretched afterwards and I was like, I'm good today. Excellent. And, you know, that's it. And so, really, that's the other thing about auto regulation with me is that I make sure that I'm able to do the thing that day that I want to do. And then, for example, in this case, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I did it two in the afternoon and typically i would work out work out after that but again it was like no today just it was it was enough and i knew that if i worked out i wouldn't be able to do my brazilian jiu-jitsu tomorrow uh the way that i want to do and so that's how i look at the things right now but it's again not just based on just the brazilian jiu-jitsu but also looking at all the other stuff i have going on in my life i just shot a new program for gmb which means that i have to demonstrate all the movements in it you know and so like things also that I have to take into consideration where, you know, I'm the dancing monkey for GMB. So if I can't perform, that's also not good, right? And so there's a lot of different things I'm looking at. But for the people listening, remember, this is what I do. And this is, to be honest, what I've done my entire life. So this is the other thing. And you brought this up, Paul. I don't want a person to look at what I'm doing and have that person think they should be able to move the way that I move. And that's why we use other people as much as possible. And we use clients and their students who, who've gone from you know, almost zero and say, hey, listen, this is where they were. This is where they are. I am simply here to say, this is an example of where we're working towards, okay? So yeah. Lots of different stuff going on with me. Uh, yeah. Last week, I just actually finished up uh, kettlebell work. And so I also use kettlebells. Yeah. And so I, you know, I use weights. Um, I was actually doing, I was doing a heavy um, um, ruck um, work last month because uh, I went on this big trek. And so I needed to make sure that I could pack out and do all that kind of stuff. So, so I'm always looking at my activities and adjusting. And so just because, you know, GMB might see me rolling around on the ground and doing all this different stuff doesn't mean that's the only thing I do. It's the yeah. method and how it's applied. That's most important to me. Yeah. Fantastic. I think that's a great place to probably wrap up. I know that it's late for you, but that was, I mean, God, I think we could probably go on for another hour. I mean, just delving into the thing about movement is that there's so many routes, there's so many conversations to be had. Yeah. And I think Absolutely. what you bring, bring to the table is just this, this kind of experience upon so many strands of that conversation. Um, so um, in terms of like uh, people finding out more about what you do, and if people want to sign up to one of your programs or explore your, your philosophy and your system, how's the best way that they do that? Yeah, first of all, first of all, don't buy anything from us until you've checked out all the free stuff. Uh, we want to make sure it's a good fit for you um, because the last thing we want is for you to buy a program, waste your money and be like, not for me. So check out YouTube. That's really um, a good thing to look at. Uh, just go into the YouTube and type in GMB Fitness. You can also just type in GMB Fitness to the Google uh, the other thing, too, is we've also got an article pretty much on every single part of the body, something else that I'm very proud that we do. This is Jarlow's thing. Again, he's a physical therapist, is that we have a lot of people who come to us and talk about injuries, prior injuries, current injuries. Um, and so if you ever have any question about the shoulder, type in GMB Fitness shoulder there's going to be a full article with a bunch of videos that's going to look at how you can you know strengthen um improve your mobility work on control in relation to the shoulder the knee ankle wrist neck t-spine i mean whatever it is uh we've got an article out there for you check all that out and uh yeah go from there fantastic so peter anything you'd like to to leave us with loads I've got a little, how long you got? <laughs> no, 
Um, no, a couple of things. Um, nothing inspiring or anything like that. I just like the way Ryan said his job. His job title appears to be Dancing Monkey. Is that is that in the corporate structure? <laughs> if you if you actually go to Instagram and and all my thing, it it says Dancing Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love that. And then the other thing, this is just a funny thing, like. Like my dog, he's, he does down with dog all the time. He stretches, right? It's hilarious. So I took a picture once and I put it, I think I put it on Instagram and I was like, to see how many, no, to see how many people said he was doing it wrong. Because he does it differently oh. every time, right? <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> Dude, it doesn't. It, that's one thing. It's, so the way I do my push-ups I mentioned earlier is different than most people. And so if you see the top portion of the push-up, it looks like a standard plank. So many yoga people tell me I do it incorrectly. Yeah. And yeah. And, I, and, and, you know, just like, okay, cool. You know, there's yeah. a different reason I'm doing it that way, but um, the, the police know, are watching. <laughs> they are. I tell you what, <laughs> so my advice, by the way, if you happen to be a fitnesser and you're putting out YouTube videos out there, never read the comments or at least don't take them personally. There you go. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, I've, I've taken so much out of this. I mean, having done your program, some of your programs, Parallax One. Well, I mean, from your first iterations of your business, Parallax One, Rings One, I've done Elements, uh, and there's um, if the flexibility programs that you had as well. They've really informed the way I actually take through some of my clients because you, you've got so many assessments, and, and your clarity of explanation was fantastic because I think you get right to the root of how to cue someone correctly. So it's been a, a great pleasure, and I, I, I've I've also learned that it turns out that you can wear anything to the gym to train so i'll get those leather trousers ready uh, <laughs> Anything. I, I think that's great as long as they're chaps yeah yeah like, yeah exactly I, I, yeah yeah I, I won't go into that <laughs> thank you so much for having me yeah <laughs> that's all right no we really t appreciate your time okay guys so that was health oddity episode 110 um we have so many fantastic guests so if you're first time listener you've got to go through our entire list because you're going to be opened up to so many great thought leaders in the industry of fitness um but please do like and subscribe and we'll see you next week for our for a guest uh, as ever take care you've been listening to health odyssey with peter land paul bassett and james st pierre to get your regular fix of hype free health you can subscribe and leave a review wherever you get your favorite podcasts you can find out more on today's and other topics at healthodyssey.com or find us on Facebook or Instagram by searching for Health Odyssey.